Hello, my friends. Welcome to Vernon Park Church of God Lunch and Learn Bible Study. I am Pastor Bruce McKinney, and I serve as the Body Life Pastor here at Vernon Park Church of God. I'm so glad that you are watching this video today or whenever you're watching it. And I thank God for you. And what we're going to do before we get into our Bible study, we're going to uh, have prayer. So let's uh, bow heads in prayer. Dear God, we thank you so very much for being God all by yourself. We thank you, Lord, for the fact that uh, you have blessed us with another day. We pray, dear God, that you will open up our hearts, our mind, and our understanding to what it is you have to say to us through your word, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So by the time you are watching this video, uh, we would have celebrated Thanksgiving. And I pray that you did that in a safe manner, whether it was virtually or with your family, and uh, that you had an enjoyable uh, Thanksgiving day. Uh, so we are thankful to God uh, for so many things in this strange year that we've had. The very fact of life is a blessing today. So we uh, thankful to God for those things. So today, um, now that the Thanksgiving has been celebrated, um, it begins the, the Christmas season. And as one songwriter said, it is the most wonderful time of the year. Um, that is true for a lot of people, but for so many others, it is a actually a, um, a time of depression. Uh, you know, the pressure of getting gifts and having everything right. And I imagine even with this year being what it is, that it uh, brings even more of that. But we can celebrate the birth of Christ in a good way, in a safe way, and uh, in an enjoyable way, the way it should be, because that is what Christmas is about. It is about the birth of Christ. The gifts and all those things, they're fine, but that is really not what it's about. So with that in mind, with the fact that this is the Christmas season, uh, we're going to talk about today the prophecies about the birth of Christ. And this is the beginning of a series of uh, things uh, dealing with the birth of Christ that we will study for the uh, next few weeks. So um, this is going to be a topical study. Uh, we did one of these on the last video um, the topical study was about Thanksgiving, giving thanks. That's what it was about. So this uh, topical study, and let me explain to you what a topical Bible study is. It focuses on a topic and not a specific book. Um, there are some, some examples of topics that can be studied in the Bible. You can study about faith in the Bible. You can study about prayer. You can study about spiritual gifts, and those are just some examples of the type of topical studies that you can do uh, with the Bible. So we're going to uh, get into our study, and we're going to uh, study about the, uh, we're going to, to look at the book of Genesis, the uh, third chapter, and the uh, 15th verse. And it reads like this, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Now, this verse, um, when you study the Bible, you should, and you study one verse or you're looking at one verse, you should know the context of that verse. It helps to clarify the understanding of what uh, that verse might actually mean uh, when you look at the context. So, uh, the context of this verse is that this uh, was after the fall, and after the fall, and what I mean by that is after Adam and Eve had eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the fruit from the tree, from the knowledge of good and evil, and um, so what happened, it was after that incident, and God had came down in the cool of the day, as he had been doing, and he said, Adam, where are thou? And Adam responded in a strange way, a different way, because of what had happened. He said, I hid myself because I was naked. Well, God asked the obvious question. Who told you you were naked? Because that, that had not come up before. 
And um, obviously it was revealed that they had eaten from the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil because they did not have that knowledge in the prior visits of God. So Adam blamed Eve. He said, the woman you gave me, uh, gave to me, gave me the fruit and I ate it. And then God turns to the woman and basically said, what is this you've done? And Eve said, Eve blames the serpent and said, the serpent tricked me. Well, yeah, the serpent did trick her. The serpent, uh, the devil was in the serpent, had gotten into the serpent. And that's how uh, Eve got, uh, was deceived. But the fact of the matter, they both had sinned. They both had sinned. So uh, one young lady in a um, children's uh, Bible class that I was teaching one time, uh, these were, were preteens, and that is an uh, interesting age, and she said, uh, her response to this uh, verse, she said, Adam just threw Eve under the bus. Well, <laughs> that may not have a lot of theological soundness to it, but it, it gets to the, ba the bare facts. And that is exactly what happened. He just threw her out there because he didn't want to take the blame for what he was responsible for. So uh, because God had uh, given Eve to him. So the other thing here in the context is, God, when we get to this verse, God is speaking to the serpent. So at this point, God is speaking to the serpent in this uh, in this uh, third verse and fifteenth, third chapter and fifteenth verse of Genesis. So we're going to look at this verse in the King James Version, uh, King James Version, right? And so. Uh, if you notice, I have a word up there. It's called Proto-Evangelium, and we're going to explain that, but it refers to this verse. It talks about what promises are in this verse, and we'll go in more detail about that. But let's look at uh, Genesis, the third chapter, the 15th verse, part A in the King James Version. And this is God talking to the serpent. And God says, I will put, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. So God is saying, first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make you all enemies because uh, of this of this whole thing. There's, there's going to be, you all are going to be enemies, okay? You're not going to, there's going to be hostility between the two of you all. Uh, and between, okay, between the serpent and the woman, and between your seeds, meaning the seed of the serpent, of the seed of, of, of the enemy, the devil, and her seed, uh, the seed of the woman. So that's what God is saying in this first part. In the, in the second part of the verse, God says, it, meaning the seed of the woman, it shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. So there's going to be a battle here, but the seed of the woman is going to bruise the head of the serpent or the head of the enemy, the head of Satan, and thou shall bruise his heel. So there's going to be a battle there. And, and, and God has, uh, has um, proclaimed that. So there will be uh, a, a savior that will come. And we'll talk, we'll talk more about this in a minute here. So again, you see the word proto-evangelium, okay? That is a, a theological term that sort of describes the, that, that describes the promises of this verse. But um, there were some consequences that had happened with the fall. So uh, let's look at those consequences that happened. One of them was condemnation before God. Adam and Eve now felt condemned before God. They didn't feel free to talk to God. God had to ask, where are you, Adam? And that's the that's one of the biggest questions uh, in the world. Where are you, Adam? Where are you, man? Uh, someone has a, um, uh, one, of, one of our former ministers has a radio show um, that says, um, uh, Adam, where are thou? And it, it's a, it's a uh, question for men. And, and um, so it's some good things that was, uh, have been said in that radio show. But it's, it's, uh, first thing is the condemnation 
uh, before God. We felt condemned. That's what. That's one of the consequences that happened with the fall. Another consequence was alienation between each other. Adam and Eve are now blaming one another. What happened to when Adam said, now this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called, she shall be called woman because she came out of me. What happened to that? Well, what happened was now uh, sin has entered the world. That harmony, that joy that he had, he began to, now he blamed her. As the young young lady said, he threw her under the bus, okay? So then from God came banishment from the garden. They were in the garden of Eden. They did not have to. All they had to do, they could have eaten of any of the fruit of any of the trees in the garden, except for the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Just one thing, one, that's the only thing. They they didn't have to worry about clothes, didn't have to worry about all this other stuff, didn't have to worry about uh, tilling the land, just cut it as it uh, grew and everything, take care of it. Um, it was easy peasy, you know, all that kind of stuff. But then they got banished from that. Why? Because if they had eaten from the tree of eternal life, they would have lived in that state forever. And that's not what God, that was not part of God's plan. And that was not going to happen. So they were banished from the garden. And then what was the other result? The last result was death, physical and spiritual death. Separation from God is spiritual death. When we are separated in our relationship from God, it's spiritual death. And that is where, uh, that's that's what sin does. Sin immediately separates us from God. And then, then there's a, uh, a effort to restore that relationship with God. And that has been the ongoing story of the Bible. Okay, so those were the consequences of the fall. So let's talk about this term, Proto-evangelium. Proto-evangelium refers to this. It is the fact that God would provide humanity with a savior through the women's lineage, through her seed. Uh, if we take a look at um, Genesis uh, 3.15, and especially in the King James Version, it says between your seed and, and, the, and uh, her seed. Well, not to get into, you know, not to be graphic with it, but simple simple biology has taught us that the seed for birth comes from the male. So that is something that is different there. God does not acknowledge that what he is doing, he is talking about the fact that there would be a seed from the woman, okay, that will crush, that will bruise the head of the um, of the enemy of Satan. Okay, so again, proto evangelium is the fact that God would provide humanity with a savior through the woman's lineage through her seed. Okay, so let's move on to our next verse. The next verse is found in the book of Isaiah, the seventh chapter, the fourteenth verse. Again, this is a t uh, verse that is by itself. And the the thing about this, I won't go into giving a lot of context to it because um, I don't think we really have the time to really explain everything that was going on. But I want to stick with the 14th verse, which is the prophecy itself. Um, I will say this, that this is a conversation between Isaiah the prophet, and uh, King Ahaz, okay, who was the king of the uh, northern kingdom at the time, okay? Um, it says, uh, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, there is so much in this verse, okay? 
So look at this. It starts with therefore, and that refers to the conversation, the prior conversation between Isaiah and King Ahaz. But he says, Isaiah is saying, the Lord himself will give you a sign. He'll give you a sign that he's with you, okay, that he will protect you. Uh, that was what was going on prior. But what? look at what this sign is. It says, the virgin will conceive. It did not say a virgin. It said the virgin. The virgin will conceive. So that's someone chosen. That's someone particular, okay? And then you have two words that normally are not together, virgin and conceive. That, that is just um, something that does not, uh, as uh, the robot used to say on Lost in Space, a robot would say, it does not compute. It is not logical. Okay, Dr. Spock on, on uh, uh, Dr. Spock would say this is not logical, okay? Uh, I don't know why I'm into all these characters, but it's just there. So just, just um, work with me on this. But the virgin, the, the, per, the, the lady, the virgin means that they have not had a relationship, sexual relationship with a man, which is what it takes, of course, to uh, conceive and give birth. Okay, so this is saying there's not going to be a human man. There's not going to be a man involved in this. Okay, the virgin, okay, will conceive, all right, which does not fix, fit our logic and give birth, okay, to a son. So it gets very specific. Uh, this is before uh, this is before all that DNA and all that kind of stuff. Okay, it says before uh, uh, gender reveals and all that. It says give birth to a son. God is giving a gender reveal right there. He's saying and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means God with us. So it will be the virgin will conceive, give birth to the son, and the son will be called God with us. And that's the prophecy there, one of the prophecies in Isaiah about the birth of Christ. So let's move on to uh, another prophecy uh, in the Old Testament. Let's look at Micah, the fifth chapter, the second verse, the, part, uh, the first part of that, part A. It reads, but you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah. So in this first part, it talks about Bethlehem. What do we learn about Bethlehem in this uh, first part of the verse? We learn that it's small, okay, among the clans of Judah. So it's sort of insignificant, but it's, it's, it's something special is going to happen. Because it says, but you, okay, that's calling you out. But you, Bethlehem, something, you, I know you're small, okay? Uh, so, but something's about to come. So let's see what the second part of this verse says. It says, out of you, out of this small town, out of you will come for me. This is God talking. Out of you will come for me, one who will be ruler over Israel. Rule over Israel, be a king over Israel, whose origin, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. So there's no date given of this of this ruler of their origin. It doesn't say uh, this this ruler was born or will be born um, at this time or was has already been born. It doesn't say that. It talks about the origins are from of old, beyond what, and, and if you look at this, it's beyond uh, what what God is revealing to them. It's beyond uh, the time that they can measure. It says, of, of, are from of old, from ancient times. So it goes back, 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 way back, okay? And so, um that is one of the, that's another prophecy about the coming of the Messiah, the coming 
of, of Jesus Christ, about the birth of Christ. Okay, we're going to look at at least one more. And again, we go to the book of Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter, the sixth verse, part A, it says, for to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. Okay, so this is talking about a child being born. Okay, a son being given. All right, so let's look at the second part. And it says, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Now, so uh, a lot of times some people say wonderful and then they say counselor, but it says Wonderful Counselor. There's no uh, comma between the two. So it says, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Listen now, look at what it says. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, okay? Everlasting, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. All those are attributes of God Almighty. Wonderful Counselor. God would teach us, show us the way. Mighty God. We know he is the mighty God. There's nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Nobody greater than God, okay? Everlasting. Everlasting means always uh, the psalmist have said, from, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. And, and, and then it talks about the Prince of Peace. God will bring peace. He will bring peace in our, in, in our lives. He can do that if we trust him. And so this is a prophecy about the coming, the birth of Christ, because no one, no other human can possess these things but Christ, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Let us say amen. Isn't that wonderful? Don't that bring joy to you? It, it does to me. Um, and I'm so glad that we can have this Bible study uh, just to bring a few verses. Uh, obviously, this is not all of them, but a few verses about the uh, prophecies about the birth of Christ. So I want to thank you for watching, taking the time out to watch this video, and I hope that you have received something from it. And I want to say, if you do not know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, this is your opportunity to do so now. Just say this prayer with me. Dear Lord, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I accept your son, Jesus Christ, and his blood that he shed on Calvary. I accept him as my savior. I want him to lead me and guide me in my life for all, for all the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer, one similar to it, then you are now a child of God. And I want to welcome you into the family of God. Uh, I want you to contact us at vpcog.org and let us know that you have accepted Christ as your Savior. And we'll send you something to help you on your journey. Also, I want you to watch our senior pastor on Sundays at 10 a.m. And he will teach you and teach all of us how to walk in this Christian life. I, I want to thank each and every one of you who contribute uh, to the ministry of Vernon Park Church of God. Uh, your gifts, your tithes and offerings from our members and offerings from our friends are the, uh, the, the, the source that help us keep these ministries going and, and to continue to uh, do the work of Christ. So we want to thank you and you can continue to give. All you have to do is just look on the screen. You can give uh, through PayPal. Uh, you can also give by mailing your uh, off tithes and offering in to our PO box that is showing there. You can give through tie.ly. You can text and give. And I want to, like I said, I want to thank you for your support because it has been uh, such a great source of joy to all of us. So I just want to close out in prayer. Uh, dear God, thank you for these viewers. I ask that you will um, bless them, Lord, be with them, bless them according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Keep them healthy, well, and safe, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. May God bless you and be safe.